On behalf of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, it is my privilege to welcome you to this time of worship as we celebrate Easter, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Everything about our faith culminates uh, with an empty tomb and, and a Savior that is risen that we may live. So welcome in the name of that Savior, Jesus Christ, to this time of worship, especially those who are visiting with us. We are glad you are here. Uh, there's just a couple of things I wanted to uh, fill you in on. The, la the benediction will be the Hallelujah Chorus. It will be sung by the choir. Anyone who would like to participate in singing the Hallelujah Chorus are welcome to come uh, to the choir loft during about the second verse of the last hymn, and we will sing that together. Uh, also, the, the special Easter offering and the fifth Sunday offering will go, go towards paying the mission givings that we, that we offer to the, the General United Methodist Church. So with that, let us greet one another in the name of our risen Savior.
please stand and join in the call to worship. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. Glory and honor, dominion and power be to God forever and ever. Christ has risen. Hallelujah. Our first hymn is on page 302, Christ the Lord has risen today. Please join me in our opening prayer. God, our Father, by raising Christ, your Son, you conquered the power of death 
and open to us the way of eternal life. Let our celebration today raise up and renew our lives by the spirit that is within us. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. It is truly a joy to be in God's house this morning. It's a joy to be in God's house every Sunday morning, but this is a special time. This is a time when, when the entire Christian church throughout the world celebrates uh, what we are all about, and that is we are resurrection uh, people. We are people of the resurrection, and that tomb is empty for a reason, and we are here to celebrate that. So there is much joy that surrounds us, the joy of family and, and friends coming to town and, and worship and all those things. But in the midst of those, we also have uh, needs, and we, ought, we need to lift folks up in prayer that are in need of God's healing presence and saving grace. And so please note those on the prayer list. I have two to add. Uh, Dale Fortune has been involved in a very serious motorcycle accident last night, and I talked to Bob last night, and he is in very critical condition, so please prayers for Dale and for Bob and Norma and their family as well. Also prayers for Kurt Papp. Are there other joys or concerns of the church here this morning? Let us then go to God in silent prayer. Gracious and eternal God, we gather in your house this morning on this Easter Sunday morning to give celebration to that old empty tomb, because Lord God, you have been raised. You are risen, and because you have been risen, we too uh, are risen to new life. Help us see more clearly the, the, the joy that comes with believing, believing beyond belief. Lord God, we, we thank you for the gift of everlasting life through our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, you, you suffered so much for us, you died so much for us that we may live this life anew. Help us to see the joy of believing and the joy of faith this day. Lord God, we celebrate throughout the world uh, your great saving presence with those who in, are in certain need of your saving grace this day. We pray for all those throughout the world uh, who are in need of your presence, your healing presence, your love and your kindness. And Lord, we pray for our great nation and our leaders. We pray for our community and our community leaders. And we pray for all of our children and families. And we pray for all of those, Lord God, because we all need you. We all need you to lift us up in our time of grief and celebrate with us in our time of celebration, Lord. And we know now that you are with us uh, even to the end of the age. And we take that promise to the bank. Uh, Lord, we, we do lift up those families are, that are grieving the loss of loved ones this day, uh, especially this morning. We, we pray for the family and friends of Dominic Zunas. We also pray for all of those who have lost loved ones during this, this very uh, holy time of the Christian year. Lord God, we also lift up to you Jim and Ted, Matthew and Barbara for Dale, and Bob and Norma and their family for Kurt. And all those others we've lifted up to you in the silence of our hearts. Lord God, we know by faith that you hear our prayers and, and, and soothe our sin-sick souls. And we just pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit be with all to heal their bodies, to nourish their faith, to set them all rejoicing, knowing that you are with them now, even to the end of the age. Lord God, we pray these things in, with joy and certainty of the eternal presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with us who taught us to pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth that it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 43, and that can be found in your pew Bible on page 1089. Then Peter began to speak. I, I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, telling the good news of peace through, through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened through, throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Let us now come forward with our tithes and offerings.
Lord God, we give you thanks for the gift of everlasting life through our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. We give you thanks for the privilege of serving you with these gifts. Bless them and multiply them to your ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to invite the children to come forward for a children's chat. Is there anybody here? Ah, oh, there's a couple. Come on over here. 
hard for me to sit in the floor this morning because I have a, my robe on this morning. What do I have in my hand? It's an Easter egg. Do you guys ever decorate Easter eggs? Wow. Well, that's good. That's good. We, we always used to do Easter eggs, and I always liked to have fun putting all the colors together and making a black egg. <laughs> that doesn't sound Eastery, does it? And it's really not. But I wanted to tell you the story about an Easter egg. Um, one of my guys did this e Easter egg, and it's pretty, pretty colorful. There's a story. One of the women who went to the tomb early in the morning, on Easter morning, was named Mary Magdalene. It wasn't the mother of Mary, it was, it was a friend of Jesus who was very sad because uh, Jesus died. When she got to the tomb and she saw the tomb was empty and later on Jesus was right there with her in the, in the garden, she was real excited. But a lot of people didn't believe her. And so what she did was she took an egg and she colored it and made it real pretty and fancy and took it to a king and said, this is the only way I can describe to you what I saw, the resurrection of Jesus. And that's what Easter is all about. This egg is colored. It's so special. It's not like a white egg or a brown egg. Uh, she made it real fancy. And, that's, and she said, that's what I felt when I saw the the tomb was empty. It was so special. It reminded me of the fanciest egg I could ever con uh, dream of. And so she showed the king this, her egg. And, and from then on, he believed, said, this must have been really special. And so when we color Easter eggs, we kind of do what Mary did way back then to celebrate uh, something brand new and so special. The only thing we could do is, is color eggs real fancy. And that's, that's kind of how coloring Easter eggs started. So that started a long time ago. Even before I was born, they started coloring Easter eggs. I know. Well, let's pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for, for the joy this day, the joy of Jesus, the joy of, of coloring Easter eggs, to, uh, just to show how special this day is. Bless us this day and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, well, thanks for coming up. I was going to leave this on the pew, but I figured I'd better not. Uh-oh. Hey, we, we have someone's purse. Okay. Well, let us now stand and sing together, number 322.
may be seated. Let us pray. Lord God, open our hearts and minds by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, that as the scripture is read and your word is proclaimed, that we may be filled with the hope of everlasting life, the hope of salvation through our risen Savior. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be satisfactory in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The Gospel is from St. Luke's Gospel, the 24th chapter. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb. Taking the spices they had prepared, they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then he remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary the Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. Easter, in the season of Easter, celebrates the unpredictability of God, the undying faith of all of God's people, and what is no longer there. For Christians, it all comes down to this day. It all comes down to the empty tomb. For Jesus, our Lord, has been resurrected. And in the words of St. Paul, if Jesus was not resurrected, if the tomb still held his body, we are people most to be pitied. Or in today's terms, we're total idiots for believing this could happen. But Paul says, and we attest by faith, that Christ has been risen from the dead. And that tomb was empty. And this fact, saints, everything about the empty tomb makes everything in our lives new. In fact, it gives each of us a second chance. It gives each of us an opportunity to live in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and know the joy of believing in everlasting life. So the tomb was empty early Sunday morning. But the world, and certainly to the women who went there early to do their duty, figured it was going to be business as usual. They saw their Jesus, their friend, die on a cross. They knew he was dead. No one could have survived such a horrific death. They knew that he would be in there. And in their minds, they said, dead is dead is dead, right? You're dead, you're dead. So often in our world and in our lives, we try to predict how life should go. We try to predict everything about our lives. We, we try to predict things with, with political polls. We, we try to uh, predict all these things. We try to predict that Duke will really go all the way this year. I'm sorry, I had to put that in. God forgive me. Some of us are trying to predict that, by the way. But also, we will also assume and predict that God will show up in our lives in predictable ways and in predictable places. We go to church to find God, right? We pray to find God. We study scripture to find God. We take walks 
to find God. All these predictable places for God to hang out. And when God appears predictably, God will dazzle us. It's going to be an amazing time. But as soon as we try to confine God to our predictable lives, God goes and does something totally unpredictable. God raises Jesus from the dead. So now, guess what? What is dead is not dead. And what should have happened that day, and what should often happen in the world, guess what? Doesn't. And then we come to the realization that we can find almost nothing that is predictable about God, not the least of which is our mortal life and our death. You see, as, try, as soon as we try to put God in a box, or into a tomb for that matter, we begin to experience God in new ways. So this morning, God is calling us to put aside our predictable lives and to live on the edge of faith. So maybe our perceptions of God, who we think God is, who we, what we think God does in the world, where we see, think God might show up, only scratches the surface of God's glory. Maybe in our narrow minds and our narrow thinking, that we have made God too small. This God of the universe who created everything we make God too small. But to live in faith, to live on the edge, means to understand how big the God that we worship truly is and to be absolutely open to the unpredictability of God. This is what Mary the mother of Jesus did. According to the Gospel of Luke, she was nowhere to be found around the cross. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was nowhere to be found around the tomb either. Mary wasn't there. We would have predicted that Mary would have been the first in line at the cross. As a mom, now she certainly would have been the first at the tomb before the sun rose, right? This is a grieving mom who just lost her son. But guess what? She wasn't there. Now, we are certainly called to grieve the loss of loved ones. We're, we're called to to grieve our human loss. We can't have that denied by anyone. But Mary showed a different type of faith. You see, her experience of the holy came to her back at Jesus' conception, about 32 years prior to when he was crucified and when he died. For she experienced God's word in her life. And for Mary, nothing would be the same after that. You see, Jesus, in Mary's mind, wasn't going to be in the tomb. Wasn't going to be there. She had so much faith in God that she knew her beloved son is truly the beloved Son of God. And the beloved Son of God has been raised from the dead. So she didn't have to show up. 
She knew in her heart that the tomb was just that, a tomb. A tomb is designed only to hold the trappings of death, isn't it? It's only designed to hold those things that we believe is no more. Certainly tombs are not designed to hold life. The saints, this morning we are called by God Easter people. We are people of the resurrection. We are people of an empty tomb. And we are called to leave those things that hinder us from celebrating the resurrection in the empty tomb. The body of Christ was not there. And that leaves room for us to deposit our hang-ups, to deposit who we were, to deposit our cynicism, our hang-ups about people, our biases, our bitterness, our anger, our grief. And to know, in the words of our late President Ronald Reagan, that there is never a dark night that does not end. See, we put in, all in, in, our, in that empty tomb all those things that hinder us from truly living the joy that Christ has through the resurrection. You see, this morning, the darkness of death has ended. Easter is not only about intellectually grasping the concept of faith in our risen Savior. And there are mountains of books and information out there that you can read about the resurrection, whether it happened, whether it didn't, and all that stuff. But the other part of that is to truly experience God's presence in your life. Mary experienced God's presence. Didn't have to go to the tomb to know that. You see, Easter is a time of great joy. Easter is a time of great celebration. Not just because of the singing. Not just because of decorating Easter eggs. Not just because of family and brunch, dinner but because it offers to each of us the experience of the holy, who promises to be with us even to the end of the age. It offers us the faith to know beyond the shadow of a doubt that those people we have lost on this earth live forevermore. They are not stuck in the tomb. They are celebrating eternal life. So Easter is our faith. Everything else pales in comparison. As I talk about the unpredictability of God, I suppose there is one predictable thing about God. And that is God's grace. You see, God loves us without condition. We can question God. We can get angry with God. We can do stupid things. We can say stupid things. And guess what? God still loves us. And calls us to believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life and those who believe in him, even though they die, yet they shall live. And all who lives and believes in him will never die. That's what we celebrate this morning. That those who believe in him will never die. Jesus wasn't there. He wasn't in the tomb. 
And so as Christians, we are called to look beyond the tomb, beyond its trappings, and truly celebrate the presence of God in our lives, to live a life that, that goes beyond those things we left in the tomb, to live a life of grace, a, a life of peace, a life of holiness, a life of love for neighbor and of God, unconditionally, as God loves us unconditionally. So to live as Jesus lived, to love as Jesus loved, and to hope as God calls us to hope. Easter is about new beginnings. Everything is new. Pray that we all see God in unpredictable ways. I pray that we celebrate the unpredictability of God, God's joy that God has given to us. I pray that we, we truly celebrate and have joy. We're Easter people. I don't want to be a group of good people in a bad mood. I want to be a group of good people in a great mood. Because Christ died but was resurrected. And for that we need to celebrate. And to be convinced beyond the shadow of a doubt that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor grief, nor loss, nor hardship, nor distress, nor anything else will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Now let us stand and sing number 310, He Lives. And if you're interested in singing with the choir, come on up and join them in the choir loft. <laughs>
Go with the power of Christ into the world. Amen.